God is on His throne. Hallelujah. 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 And we have no reason to despair, do we? He is there for us. Hallelujah. Because He sent Jesus to deliver us and rescue us and save us and give us hope and give us a whole new life in Him. You know, to serve God is not a drudge. It is a joy. To serve God is a joy. And it is and it is the experience of life itself, really, because without the Lord, we don't really have any life. If we're in this world without Him, then we're just dead or we're dying. We're just dead. Uh, we may be out walking around, but we're dead as a beaver's hat. Uh, John Wayne said that. Case yeah. <laughs> the only one. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you ready for the Word of God? Amen. Appreciate everybody coming. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time out to be with us. You've driven a long ways, and I hope you don't leave here disappointed. May the Lord touch you, the Spirit of God fill you, and God give you a word to take with you to always remember. Amen. Thank you, Father. Okay. John 8, I have, I have a lot of scriptures to read to you this morning, but I'll just, I'll start with John 8 and go from there. That'd be okay? Is it on the wall? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Snuck up on me. Right there. <laughs> then spake Jesus again. Oh boy, there's a message in itself. <laughs> we need to hear Jesus again and again. Yeah. Amen. And I don't want him to ever be quiet. Amen. You, me, yeah. Amen. But I don't want him to ever be quiet. Amen. I want him always to speak. For He is the Word of God. And His Word is life. Hallelujah. His Word is light. Yeah. His Word is the way. Amen. What, were all, what were we what, 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 what were we all created for? The older I get, you know. What were we created for? We were created for the way. Not your way, His way. Simple as that. If you're walking in a way that isn't His way, you're in the wrong way. If you're not walking with Him, you're walking on the wrong road. But that's what sin did. That's what Satan did. He deceived, he deceived man and deceives the whole world. And they're led astray. But we were created by God to walk in that way. Amen, Amen Ed. <laughs> Boy, I love you. I can't tell. I just can't tell you enough, Ed. He's my brother. Like Mike's my brother. 
you're all my brother. Greg, you're my brother. John, back there, he never says a word. He just sits there. I love you, my brother John. Big John. Big bad John, yeah. And little sister Marty. They're precious. They've been with us from the very start and just stuck with us all the way and never asked for anything but just to serve God and to do what they do for His glory. You can't ask for any better than that. That's the best. And all of you here that's, that's here that goes to this church here, you've stuck with us. And I hope the ones that's been coming lately and that's, that's, new, that's, that's newer here, I hope you stick with us. Amen. Be with us. Please be with us. The devil is out there trying to destroy what God's doing and he don't like it. He don't like you. He don't like me. He don't, he don't like none of us. Hallelujah. But we were created to hear what Jesus has to say. He that has ears to hear. What did God create your ears for? To hear Him. Hallelujah. We must have instruction. We must know the truth. We must have somebody tell us what to do. That's why we ought to act towards the Lord. We shouldn't say, well now Lord, I know that. I think I can handle this or I understand this situation here. We all come to the Lord like a bunch of dummies and say, Lord, what do I do next? <laughs> what do you say about it all? Because I'm listening to hear. Jesus speaks again. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, Number one, question. We know what the light is. Christ is the light. Now, what is the word walk? What does it mean? Literally, the word walk, is this a term that's used to mean how you live, your behavior, the pattern of your life. The way in which you live. How you live. Living. To walk. Means simply. To live. To live out your life. He that follows me. What does the word follow mean? The direction that you're going. That which governs the way in which you go and how you think and what decides, makes the decision in your entire life. There ain't one thing we should ever do in life without a decision. Some people just go head over heels into whatever they're doing. They don't even think about what they're doing. And just head plunge, plunge head first into whatever they're doing. And they have no direction in their life. They go from day to day not knowing what they're going to do, where they're going to go, how they're going to act, what they're going to say, 
how they feel. They're just kind of, you know, it's a toss-up. <laughs> well, I feel pretty good today. I don't feel so good today. Well, I think I know what I'm going to do today. The next day, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> That's the way life is sometime, isn't it? I think we've all been there. But to follow Jesus is to have direction. It also means to have an anchor. We're not like the wise men when Jesus was born who simply followed the star. Now God led them by that star. But we're following the one that the star led them to. God has many ways in your life to bring you around about to one point, one crossroad in your life. Now we know there's only one way to heaven. How many believes that? Amen. Jesus is the way. But there are many ways, I believe, that God leads you through life to bring you to Christ. Isn't that true? Yes. Every single person goes through life without direction from God, living out their lives, doing whatever they do, involved in life and whatever it is they're involved in, and God somehow is leading them to a place, to a meeting place with Christ. So to follow Christ is to be directed by Him. He that follows me shall not walk or live in the darkness. Amen. Now what is darkness? What is darkness? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Some translations hovered. And God said, Let there be light. Paul teaches us by the Holy Spirit that man without God is darkness. No matter how intelligent we may be, or how educated we may be, how smart that we may be, without God, without the Spirit of God, man is not just in darkness, but he is darkness. Paul said you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. That kind of answers the sin question, doesn't it? What is, what is darkness? Man in his fallen state. What is the fallen state? The sin nature of man. It's the sinful way or selfish, self-centered way of man. Man who is his own God. 
Which means he lives for himself. He'll do what he wants to do. He's not answerable to God. He's not answerable to anybody. He just does what he wants to do. Good or bad. Right or wrong. He just does what he wants. Now there's a certain restraint that's put on man in his conscience of what is right or wrong so that he sort of has a restraint there to keep him from doing things that's too evil, but not all men are that way. Some men are more wicked than others. Some men are more evil than others. Some men uh, yield themselves to evil things, unspeakable things. And they just go head over heels. And some people just, just, they just, you know, they just get all involved in, in sin in the world and doing what they want to do. And, well, all of this is darkness. Man is in darkness. He is darkness. Jesus said, He that follows me. Shall not walk. In darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, we all sin. Yeah, we all sin. As Christians, we sin. But there's a difference in sinning and living in sin. Do you hear me? Get that down. Write it down in your little notepad. <laughs> The difference in committing a sin or flat out living in sin. We are not living to sin as Christians because he that follows Christ doesn't live in the darkness. Lord, help me. Everybody said, Lord, help me. <laughs> help me to see the light, Lord. Help me to see the light. Hallelujah. He that follows the light is not going to walk or live in the darkness. He was the light that shined. John said he came. He's the light and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness does not extinguish the light. But the light extinguishes the darkness. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Yeah. Jesus said, now listen to how he put it. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light Hallelujah. of life. Yeah. So life has a light. Praise God. You Christians walk up to one and say, you got a light? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't smoke, but... Uh, uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. That's good, amen? amen. Yeah. We're therefore following Jesus. We're not living... To sin. To be sinful. That's darkness. Doesn't mean we can't. Sin. We can fail in the flesh. We can be weak. But thanks be unto God. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Thanks be unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. You know, we're walking along the pathway and it's just, sometimes it's kind of narrow and, you know, it's kind of hard to go and there's a little snake comes up the side of it every once in a while. And you go like this, you know. <laughs> and the devil won't reach out and bite you. But just stay on the path. Don't get off the path. Don't get out there where them snakes are. <laughs> you leave them snakes alone. Amen. 
I like what Brother Hall said one time. He's preaching on how Jesus said, you cast out devils in my name, take up serpents in my name, and all that. He said, my God, I don't want to take up serpents. I don't, I don't want to be around snakes. I want to get out of here. I don't want to be around these snakes. Are. <laughs> Let's stay away from them snakes. Stay away from the darkness. Don't let that serpent mesmerize you. You ever see the Jungle Book? <laughs> Don't let the snake mesmerize you with his colorful eyes. But stay alert. Be on your guard. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He's teaching you something. He never said you wouldn't be around it. He never said you wouldn't go through it. But He said, I'll be with you. Yes. Thank you Lord. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, darkness, I will fear no evil for you're with me. He that follows me will have the light. My God, when you go out in the dark, when you go outside at night time and you're, and you're hunting coons, you need a flashlight. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How many is from the South? I didn't know what I'm talking about. When you're out in the darkness and you're looking, you, you're following the trail and you hear the dog barking, you need a light to kind of show you the way. Jesus said, He that follows me shall have the light of life. When you're facing a problem in life and you can't figure it out, you need a light. You need a light. Hallelujah. When you get old, it's like you need a light, you know. You need a light. Yes, sir. Yes, well, you sir. can see more clearly. You need a light. Yes, Hallelujah. He that follows me is going to have the light of life. He that follows me is going to know what to do. He's going to know where to go. He's going to know how to handle the situation because I'm going to show him how to do it. God's not going to leave you hanging. He's going to show you what to do. Praise God. And He will give you strength. He will give you power. He will make you an overcomer if you will follow Jesus. Don't follow your own mind. It gets you in trouble. You know your mind always got you in trouble before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I trust it now. You can't trust your own mind. You, got, you need somebody else's mind. Ain't that right, Brother Ed? You can't trust your own mind, man. That time I lose my mind. I need his mind. <laughs> Glory to God. I love you, Brother Ed. I just love you to death, man. I can't help it. So good to see him and him and his wife here. It's so good to see you. But Ed, we need the mind of Jesus. Amen. Jesus can see right through the darkness. Hallelujah. David said, Lord, if I'm in the darkness, the darkness is light to you. It's light to God. But sure is dark to me. The darkness is so dark to me and I can't see. But Jesus is the light. If I try to pen penetrate the darkness with my own mind and reasoning, I'm going to lose my way. We need a light. All right, let me get on. Let me get on. Praise God. What time is it? You don't care? No. Okay, good, 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 see here, good, amen, I got all kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> now darkness and light can't mix. Huh? Oil and water came next. Light and darkness. Let 
Matthew 26. Jesus is about to go to the cross. And he goes to Gethsemane with his disciples to pray right before he is arrested. We know the story. Jesus said, you sit here while I go and pray. He said, watch. You pray and watch. He went about a stone's, uh, a stone's throw away. I don't know how far that would be. What, 50, 100 feet? Depends on who's throwing the stone, I guess. <laughs> To be alone with the Father. For he said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful to death. Heavy. Stay here. Stay here and watch. He went away and he fell on his face on the ground. said, Oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He came back and found Peter, James, and John sleeping. He said, Well, couldn't you watch at least an hour? Pray. He went away again saying the same words, O oh, Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Now notice the progression if it's possible, let this cup pass away from me. And again, if this cup may not pass away, except I drink it. It's the only way I can get rid of this is to drink it your will be done. Three of the gospel writers wrote about that night. Mark writes, Abba, Father, all things are possible with you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but what you will. Luke he writes about that night. Father, I want, you to, I want you to notice the progression. I want you to notice how Jesus is praying. Father, if you be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not in my will. Time be done. In John, Jesus prays a long prayer. The 17th chapter of the book of St. John is a, is a beautiful prayer. If you've never read it, you need to read it. 
He's speaking to the Father how that he is praying for the oneness of his disciples with himself and the Father. That they may be one in us. I in them and thou in me. That they may be one in us. That they may behold the glory which you gave to me before the world even was. O oh, righteous Father, the world hasn't known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you have sent me. I have declared to them your name and will declare it that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. But when he went to the garden to pray, he faced the most terrible thing in his whole entire life. Existence. When they came to arrest Jesus, they said, I was, He said, I was daily with you in the temple teaching you. And you come to arrest me. But this this is your time. This is the hour of darkness. In the prayer that Jesus prayed to the Father to make us one, He knew that there's no way possible for us to be one with Him as long as we are in the darkness. In order for there to be light in me, He must take away my darkness. That's what He did. The Bible says He took our sins upon Himself. And what is sin? But darkness. Father, I will that they be with me where I am. If you're willing. But God so loved the world. Glory. Come on. What's He willing to do? What is God willing? How far will He go? Will He put His own Son on the sacrificial altar? Will He give up His Son's own life? He must. For this is the hour of darkness. Jesus came to enter into that darkness and take it upon Himself. The hour of darkness. But Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Glory. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Jesus might have went down under the flood of waters that overwhelmed him to death. But he says, my Father has not left me to perish on the cross. 
Jesus crying out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And there was darkness over the land for three hours. The sun refused to shine. This wasn't no eclipse, saints. No. Scientists said, well, that was an eclipse. No, it was not an eclipse. God put out the sun. Sin! That hour of darkness has put out the sun. It must be. And for three hours, Jesus hung on that cross in the darkness, feeling the weight of all creation upon his soul, the weight of all sin. The sun refused to shine when the sun took our sins. If you're willing, Father, take this from me. If you're willing, you can do it. Because this is impossible for light to fellowship with darkness. You must drink the cup for their sake. Hallelujah. And he who was light, the light of the world, took on the darkness of this world to himself. But after three days, there is hope. Oh, yes, glory. Hallelujah. The sun is going to rise again. Hallelujah. And the darkness will be dispersed, and the light of God will shine forever and ever and ever in the face of the living Christ. And you and I who have believed upon Him have died with Him, but we are risen together with Christ. We are risen together with Him into the light of God. Eternity, hallelujah. I once was dead in sin, but now I'm alive because of Jesus. I don't want to be in the darkness. Father, I've never been in the darkness. I don't want to be away from you. I don't want to feel the pains of hell upon my soul. But I'll do it. If it's your will. And he did it. Because he loved God above all. He loved his father. He loved his father more than anything. And he was made perfect through his sufferings. Say, so where does it say that? Read it. Christ being made perfect through his sufferings, his obedience to what? To 
infinite love of God. He was a man after all in the flesh. But as a man, when he became man, he entered into a world of darkness. You hear me? Not because there's not a sun that shines upon the earth. Because of sin that's in the heart of men makes the world a dark place. But He who was with the Father, He who was with the eternal light, God has always been. You hear me? God has never had a beginning. He's always been. And God is light. Yes, and in Him is no darkness at all. Yes, Glory to God! And Jesus was with the Father always. Enjoying bathing in the light of the Father. But now the Father sends Him into a dark world. A dark world lost, hopeless world. A world who doesn't know God. A world who has forgotten. A world who has gone astray. A world who is in trouble. A world who is hurting. A world who is in need of God. Desperately. Man, if you ain't God, if you don't have the Lord... You are in a desperate situation. Without God at Washington, we're in a desperate situation. Without God in your hometown, it's in a desperate situation. Without God in your family, your family is in a desperate situation. Whether you realize it or not, you're in a desperate situation. God sent His Son into a desperate situation. And He shone forth His glory to the world. He manifested forth His glory, His light to a dark world. But the Father said, you have to drink this cup. going to have to stop the light. You're going to be smothered, overtaken, overwhelmed. It's going to overtake you. You're going to have to feel the pain of separation. Feel the pain of hell itself upon you. I won't leave you there. I won't leave you there. I trust in the Lord. The psalmist says, I trust in the Lord. He is always before my face. Therefore, I shall not be afraid. When the floods overwhelm me, Lord, you're with me. If the darkness covers me about, you are with me. For the darkness is light to you. You can see. Let me tell you something. You think in your sin that you're hiding from God. You're not hiding anything from God. God sees your little sins. He sees your what you're doing in the dark. Can't hide from God. He knows everything. So quit acting like God don't know anything about your situation. He knows all about it. God forgot about me. He don't love me. He don't care about me. Quit listening to the devil. The devil told you that, not God. God cares about you so much that He sent somebody to drink your cup of wrath. 
and indignation. Your cup of darkness and sin. That's what it is. But he did it. So that you and I could have the light of life. Here, I'll take your darkness away and give you light. I'll take your burden away and give you peace. I will take your punishment for your sins and give you my salvation. Hallelujah. I will take you out of the market, slave market of sin. Hello. And I will be your redeemer. I am, the Lord says, your redeemer. You don't have to walk in darkness anymore. He took it for you. You don't have to stumble along through life anymore. <laughs> but you can walk sure and steady and steadfast because He gives you a way to go. And He strengthens your every step. And He gives you light to show you the way. And you don't have to go through life, stumbling through life, wondering what to do next. Jesus, hallelujah. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. You're not going to be like the world, not knowing where you're going. Stumbling through life. Because you're blind. can't see. But now your eyes are open. Glory to God. I will open your heart. I will open up the way for you to live. I will give you a reason for living. Every time you pray, my Father will hear you. Every time you need help, He'll be there for you. Every time you make a mistake or you falter and fail, He will, I will, we will pick you up. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, I will give you a comforter. I will give you my spirit. And He will encourage you and be with you forever and ever and ever and ever. He will never leave you. Lord, must I drink this cup? Yes, I must drink the cup. Because God so loved the world. Why must Jesus die? Why must Jesus suffer? So that we can live. You're not living for God because you did everything right. You're living for God because Jesus suffered for you. You're not living for God because you finally figured out how to yeah, get up enough courage and enough, you know, whatever to, to get yourself going. No, you're, you're living for God because Jesus took your place. And when you get out and pray, He's there for you and me because Jesus drank that cup. Think about that next time you pray. Hello. It happens to me all the time, you know. You all know me. That's page one. must come. I'll say this in close. He must
must come and descend. I love that scripture. He must come and descend into the lower parts of the earth. He must. He must descend into the darkness. Into the depth of sin. He must take it upon himself. He must be overwhelmed. He had to. Because the sin of the whole world overwhelms. Whatever you do ain't lightly with God. Well, I just heard a little bit of a little, little white lie. <laughs> Your little white lie is overwhelming. Jesus must descend. He must descend. Go down into it. I don't want to go there. But I will. Father, I will. If that's what you will, I will. I'll go. But he that descended is also he that ascended. That's right. Amen. Far above all heavens. He didn't leave him there. And God is not going to leave you in the darkness. When you come to Him, He will bring you to the light and give you the light of life and give you the answer to life. Jesus is our wisdom, our knowledge, our understanding. He is our joy. He is our life. He is our faith. He is our love. He is everything to us. God will not leave you desperate and alone and not knowing. He is going to bring you out. Just as Christ rose from the dead, just as surely as He arose and ascended to heaven, you also will arise. So when you get out and pray and you feel like, <laughs> just remember Jesus. Who when He was praying in the garden, His sweat became as drops of blood. Bleeding for you and me. Desperately praying. His soul was being poured out on the altar. Mixed with his own blood. Have you ever prayed that way? I don't think so. You ever prayed so hard that blood poured out of your forehead? It did with Jesus. The little blood veins in his body burst. He was in such agony, such sorrow, such a burden, the weight sin upon him, the darkness that came upon him. He didn't want to go there. <clears throat> Son of God didn't want to go there. But he was willing to go. If it will save one, I will go. Yeah. If it will save you, Jesus said, I will do it. Yeah. If it saved me, if he did it just for me, I will do it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just remember when you pray, Come up from there praising God. Come up from there. Come up from your prayer praising God. Because you are in the light and you're not left in the darkness of your need. Some people get down and pray and they leave. They get up and they leave in the darkness of their need. But if you believe and trust God, He doesn't leave you in the darkness of your want and need. You can get up 
praise God with a load off your shoulders and off your mind and praise God with a joy in your heart and a praise on your lips because the Lord has brought you out into the light of His love. Hallelujah. Is that what you want? Stand with me. Stand with me, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you what, the Holy Ghost just keeps pu putting that in my heart and mind. When you get down to pray with, a, with and, you, and you're carrying a load, and you get up, you don't have to take that load with you. When you come to the Lord and you have a problem and you leave it at His feet, you don't have to pick it up and take it with you. He'll take care of it for you. The hour of darkness is over. I said the hour of your darkness is over. Amen. Don't live there. You don't have to live there. You don't have to bear that. Jesus bore it for you. He took it for you. He intervenes for you. He's there all the time making intercession for you and me. Because He is the light and He is the life. And He is the answer. And He is the supply. And He's the one that the Father sent to be all those things for us. So we can live in victory. We can live with our needs supplied. We can live knowing He is my Savior. He is my shepherd and I shall not want. Hallelujah. If I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, He's with me. No matter what I go through in life, He's with me because He's the light of my life. He is the Savior of my soul. Hallelujah. Lord, stir your people this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Grab somebody's hand real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, revive us. Lord, revive your people. Speak to our hearts, Savior. Shine the light that we can see, Lord. Help us to get up from where we are and go on with you. You're not going to leave us alone, but Lord, you tell us to get up. Get up. Get up. Get up and live for me. Get up. Get up and serve me. Get up. Get up. And I will put the enemy under your feet in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost just spoke to you. The Lord says he will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And put the enemy under your feet. Hallelujah. He will. He has. He always will. Because Jesus is triumphant. He is Lord of all. In Him we live. In Him we are victorious. In Him we have the light of life. In Him we are not defeated. In Him we are not perplexed. In Him we are not unsure. In Him we are perfectly sure. We have the assurance of God in Jesus Christ. The assurance for life. And that ain't a million dollars in the bank. That's the gem of God in heaven. It's not a million dollars in the bank. It's the gem of God in heaven. You can't get any richer than that. Amen? He is the precious jewel. And you can't put a price on Him. He is of more value. Listen. He is of more value than the whole world. And one drop of His precious blood is more precious than the whole world. A half a drop, a fraction of a drop can save the world. And He poured out His life. He poured out all of His blood. He covered the ground where He hung on the cross with His blood. It wasn't just a little drip 
He poured his life out. He drank that cup to the fullest. He gave all he had. He gave everything he had. So that we might live. So that we might pray and find the answer. So that we might draw nigh to God. So that we may know Him who is real. Know Him who loved us and gave Himself for us. Amen. Glory. And to walk in darkness no more. Oppression. Disease. Anything. Anything that oppresses you. Anything that, anything that burdens you down. You don't have to be there anymore. Father, I pray this morning for the church. Pray for your people. I believe, Lord, you have sent me to speak to your people. We pray for the lost. Those that don't know you, that have come to know you, Lord. Don't let them be lost. Don't let them go to hell. Save their soul. Those who are listening, God, that don't know you, may they come to Christ. May they find you, Lord. you sent me to speak to your people to encourage and build up those who have drifted away those who are cold and indifferent those who have kind of lost their way you are the shepherd of their heart you are the light of their life and the enemy has come in to steal away that you are our deliverer, our Savior. Revive us, Father. Restore us. Help us to remember what you did. Put a praise in our heart, Lord, and a prayer. Lift us up. Lift us up above the shadow. Lift us up above the darkness. Let us walk in the light as he is in the light. And we will truly have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless your people this morning. Let them take this word in their hearts with them. Always remember what you did for them. To never be discouraged or disheartened. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.